On today's show, Ford's autonomous car is going to get its own unique body style. The cost of carbon fiber could get cut in half, and GM's Baozhen brand in China already outsells Chevrolet. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. The Ford Motor Company is already working on the production version of the autonomous car it will unveil in 2021 for ride-hailing services. People involved in the program tell AutoLine the car will be a hybrid based on an existing platform. That suggests it could be a Ford Fusion or C-Max or a Lincoln MKZ, since those are the hybrids that Ford sells. Even so, the autonomous version will have its own unique body style, or to use the industry jargon, its own top hat. Ford is also working on an autonomous dynamic shuttle service. While the people on the program would not say which vehicle would be used, they admitted that a transit van would be perfect for that application. When introducing new technology on a new vehicle, Ford typically uses two separate teams, one to develop the technology, the other to develop the vehicle. But for its autonomous car project, Ford is using one co-located team in Dearborn, Michigan to ensure that the autonomous technology is fully integrated into the car for job one in 2021. And one reason why automakers are so bullish on autonomy is that the cost is coming down fast, especially for LiDAR. You know what LiDAR is. That's the spinning doohickey you see on the roofs of so many autonomous cars. It is a combination of lasers and radar that gives these cars impressive visibility of their environment. A decade ago, LiDAR cost $80,000 for each unit. In 2010, the cost dropped to $40,000. Two years ago, Velodyne, one of the major manufacturers of LiDAR systems, introduced a unit that cost $8,000. But the next generation will cost about $250 and be about the size of a fat hockey puck. The cost of sensors and processors needed for autonomous cars are also coming down fast. Give it another decade. Autonomous technology is going to turn out to be very affordable. Speaking of affordability, what if carbon fiber became cheap enough to use in middle market cars? That's coming up next. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Carbon fiber in cars is nothing new, but up to now it's been used in high-end models like the Dodge Viper or the BMW i3. It's perfect for lightweighting cars to make them more fuel efficient, but it's expensive. However, that could change. The Oak Ridge National Laboratory developed a new process that cuts production costs by more than half. Not only that, it needs 60% less energy to make. Recently, the Oak Ridge Lab teamed up with Le Mans Composites to make the carbon fiber. And Le Mans Composites is owned by three-time Tour de France champion Greg Le Mans. He says his company is already negotiating with several automakers to use the new composite, and they plan to have it commercially available by 2018. Passenger cars get a lot of the focus when it comes to improving fuel economy, but the commercial side of the business also needs to contribute. That's why the EXA Corporation teamed up with OEMs to use its simulation software to research the benefits of truck platooning. Earlier this year, a European study found that a 50-foot distance between trucks improved fuel economy by 10%. But EXA's simulations show that the optimum distance between platooning trucks is more like 30 feet. But if they get any closer than that, it blocks the air to the radiators, which triggers the cooling fans to come on, and that hurts fuel efficiency. Platooning could play a significant role in reducing emissions and fuel consumption with big commercial trucks. Still to come, the Chinese government forced General Motors to create a new car brand for China. And they did such a good job, it's now outselling Chevrolet. 
Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. Are you familiar with the top 10 selling brands in China? The Data House LMC compiled this very interesting list, which shows that Volkswagen is the most popular brand and by a wide margin. But it's also fascinating to see Buick outselling powerhouses like Toyota and Honda. And take a look at number five on the list, Chang'an. It is the best selling Chinese brand. And by the way, Chang'an is Ford's manufacturing partner in China. You'll also note that Haval is also on the list. That's the brand named used by Great Wall Motor Company, which is China's largest SUV manufacturer. And as you all know, SUVs are selling red hot in China. Also, notice Baozhen at the bottom of the list. That's the All China brand that General Motors launched a couple of years ago. It's been so successful, it knocked the Chevrolet brand off the top 10 list. I know a lot of you out there are very interested in Elio Motors. Well, on AutoLine After Hours later this afternoon, our guest is Jeff Johnston, the Vice President of Engineering for Elio. I'll be traveling later today, so I will not be there, but be sure to join Gary Vasilash for some of the best insights into the automotive industry. And with that, we wrap up today's report. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.